For this Wilson Audio July 4 special, we're going to step back to 1997 and Soundstream. Let's take a look at the 1997 Car Audio Electronics directory. We'll see Soundstream has no less than 20 different models of amplifiers, actually more than 20, including five of the USA series. Now these range anywhere from 219 to 529 at the time, which equates to 415 to about $1,000 in today's money. This 1997 brochure from Soundstream covers the USA series amplifiers, talks about all the features and benefits, but also teases on the flag that's on the circuit board of these amps, which we'll get to in a little bit later in the video. Now, the one we're looking at today is a USA 364, which retailed for $529 back in the day. This is a four-channel amplifier, and here we have one in the box. Thanks to Dale from North Carolina, he actually sold this to me a while back and thought this will be a great amplifier to show off for July 4th special Wilson Audio. Roll that beautiful patriotic music. Although not new in box, this was a complete in box 1997 amplifier. It includes here a document from 1996. Also, the warranty card, which was never filled out. Guess we could still fill that out and send it in. I'm sure Soundstream has got us. In addition to the warranty car, we have this really cool brochure selling clothing. We need some of that Soundstream. And of course, we have the owner's manual, which is essential even for today to look at these old amplifiers to find out what they say. Now this one, the USA 364, was the most powerful four channel at 60 watts by four. We will get to the ratings later in the video. The high-end sound streams in 1997 were the reference Class A series, which had a polished aluminum or chrome finish. You can see these have kind of a blue powder-coated finish, resembling the earlier 90s reference models, which I've tested before, the reference 500 and 300. As with many of the Soundstream amps, all the connections are on one side of the amp, which makes it very simple. The 12-volt ground remote, as well as channels 1 and 2, are all accessible via screw-down terminals, as well as a power LED between those. Then we have inputs and outputs for RCAs for channels one and two, as well as a bass EQ and a level control. Then we have the speaker outputs for channels three and four. Also, we have low pass mono output, bass EQ, input level adjustment, and the RCA inputs for channels three and four. This amp is capable of being driven by only two RCA inputs via a switch on the bottom of the amp to select either two or four channels of input. Since we couldn't find our old school vinyl collection, we decided to put the sound stream here on the turntable so you can see what the amp looks like in all different directions. You can see it's just kind of plain, except for the one side that has all the connections. However, on the bottom, it does have some covers and some access panels and also some silk screening. It tells you what's going on here. We have fuses, we have crossovers, we have switches, all kind of fun stuff on the bottom, including two 20 amp fuses, which provide protection for the amp. Now, crossover modes, there are switches for setting it whether you want high pass or low pass, whether you want to do two channel or four channel input, also the base EQ, whether you want to have it flat or variable. As far as a crossover goes, Soundstream doesn't tell us what frequency we're crossover at. I assume it's 80 hertz, but this is modifiable and they do give you some instructions in the manual. Some of the highlight features include Handcraft in the USA, Darlington output technology, Mix mono capable, two ohm stable, built in stagger crossover, base EQ, delayed turn on circuit, flexible input sensitivity, as well as differential balanced input topology. This Class AB four channel amp measures 13 inches by 8.2 inches by 2.2 inches. Millimeter equivalents are there as well for those outside the US. Testing these old school amps is usually a roll of the dice because you don't know if the amp is actually going to work or not, if you're going to be able to run the amp dyno test. In this case, I actually thought the amp didn't work, but then I had to realize it takes almost five seconds, actually a little over five seconds for it to power on as shown here. So now that it powers up, we're going to fire up the good old SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno so we can test the power output of this amplifier. On the left, you'll notice the RMS power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, the voltage of the dyno. We'll also show the remote clamp display so we can calculate efficiency. This here's my favorite part. First test will be showing the four channel mode of the amplifier. Two of the channels will be 
shown by the dyno, the other two will be loaded down by external resistors. Four ohms, the amplifier is rated 60 watts by four. One kilohertz track on the certified test up to 1% distortion. We get so close, about 57 watts per channel, a little bit under the 14.4. The amp doesn't tell us in the manual what it's rated at, and I'm thinking since it's a lower cost Soundstream amp at the time, it probably is rated at 14.4. Uncertified there, we got pretty much the same that we got certified. Dynamically, we did get well above the 60 watt per channel rating, closer to 80 watts per channel actually. So that's a good sign for this amp moving forward. What about the efficiency? Again, it is a class AB amp for channel. 50% efficient is about what we'd expect for a class AB. Now let's try two ohms for channel. It's rated 90 watts by four, but again, voltage is not specified. One kilohertz track. And yeah, we're a bit shy here. Uh, about 80 watts by four is what we measured up to 1% distortion. Let's try the test up to the clipping point. And again, virtually the same. Now we're gonna send the one kilohertz burst track to check out the dynamic power at the amplifier. And you can see once again, the dynamic power is much more impressive, at least by the numbers than the other results, which were close, but not quite there. Efficiency drops to 40% at two ohms on the four channel mode. Now we're gonna bridge the amplifier and try the two channel test where it's rated 180 watts per channel at four ohms. Again, voltage not specified. Let's try certified test first to 1% distortion. So close, 175 watts per channel, 14.12. Again, if we were 14.4, we would probably get that power. Uncertified to clipping, can we get the 180? 177, literally three watts away. But again, our voltage is just a few tenths shy of being 14.4. But look at this dynamic power. Over 500 watts combined with both channels, over 250, actually 260 watts per channel, 14.25. Efficiency we measured about 48%. Now we'll show the results of all the tests we performed. You just saw all of these tests here on the four channel mode. On well, the two channel mode, we also ran it at eight ohms bridged. Gives you an idea of how much power it does at that load if you want to use it that way. Now let's go ahead and hook it up to some speakers and see how it sounds. Here we have the Soundstream USA 364. We've got it hooked up to the ELAC bookshelf speakers and also the old school MTX Bandpass Dual 10 subwoofer. So we have channels three and four bridged on low pass Channels one and two just go in stereo, full range. So you know what we gotta play. That's right, some smoke jacket blues. Let's take the bottom panel off this amplifier and find out what's up with this flag circuit board that's so patriotic. Oh man, isn't this just so cool? Check out the flag design here on the circuit board of the Soundstream USA 364 amplifier. You can also see the proud handcrafted in the USA Soundstream Technologies, also the 35 volt 1000 microfarad capacitors there for the rails, also 16 volt 2200 microfarads for the power supply, and notice the way the circuit board seems to be divided up. The stars are on the power supply section while the stripes appear to be on the output section. Just super cool the way this amplifier looks, patriotic theme, this is July 4th, just super cool. We also got our hands on a USA 204, which is at the top. It does not work, 
but it is neat just to see both amps. Of course, we also got the FLIR, so we could check some of these thermal temperatures. You can see the outside here of the heat sink was not extremely hot. And on the inside, the transformer is really the hottest part, but nothing out of the ordinary. Now let's find out the pros and cons of this patriotic amplifier. First up, made in the USA in California by Soundstream back in the late 90s. Unique circuit board, of course. Has a variable bass boost, screw down terminals, RCA outputs for low and high output, four channel, three channel, or bridged operation. 25 years old and still working, and it sounds amazing. Things to be aware of, it is class AB, so relatively low efficiency. Standard RCAs, no Tiffany. Complex crossover with a bunch of switches about like Easy e 64 Impala. It is 25 years old, so it may need some servicing eventually. The LED is red only. I like green or blue LEDs that way to let us know things are good. There you have my review and test of the Soundstream USA 364 from 1997. And a quick shout out as well to the men and women who serve the United States of America. Thank you for keeping our country free. This is Big D. Until next time, you know where I'm at. I'm out of here. In the 4 ohm bridge test, we also ran it at 40 hertz just to see the difference. And yeah, it was a little bit less power, around 150 watts times 2. It is rated 180 by 2. We also ran the dynamic burst test to see if we could get here power output. And of course, we well exceeded that 180 by 2 with 235 watts. Big D, I'm out.